Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is purpura and microvascular occlusion. I am going to cover this topic under two lectures. So I am delivering the first one and the second one will be delivered inshallah next week. So let's proceed to the lecture. Introduction. Purpura is the discoloration of the skin or mucous membranes due to extravasation of RBCs. It occur as a result of abnormalities of the blood vessel wall and in numerous hematological conditions due to platelet and coagulation disorders. So generally, oozing of blood from the vessels, which is uh, purpura, is caused by either some defect in the blood vessels or some defect in the coagulation cascade or some defect in the platelets. Patients with purpura may require multidisciplinary management. And this lecture addresses purpura that is not primarily of vasculitic origin. So we are excluding those diseases in which purpura occurs secondary to vasculitis. So this, is, this lecture will mainly cover the non-inflammatory causes of purpura. Definition of purpura. There are two kinds of purpuric lesions. Petechi, which are the small purpuric lesions, usually one to two millimeter and occasionally four millimeter across that often occurs in crops. Then large purpuric lesions are called as ecchymosis or bruises which are, of course, larger than four millimeter and comprises of large extravasation of blood. So in this picture, you can see the small pinpoint purpuric lesions, which are called as the petechi, and the larger purpuric lesions, which are called as the ecchymosis. Many causes of petechi and ecchymosis overlap. For example, thrombocytopenia usually causes petechi, but more extensive bleeding may occur at lower level of platelet count. So if the platelets count drop too much, then in spite of developing petechi, the patient develop ecchymosis. In contrast, the coagulation disorders usually cause ecchymosis rather than petechi. The sequence of color change in a bruise help to establish its duration. So extravasated blood is broken down to various other pigment derived from him, heme, usually within two to three weeks. So if the lesion is classically red, you can say that it is within, this lesion has an onset of a few days. Then gradually in a week time, it turns blue. Then it becomes purple in about 10 days. In the smaller and more superficial purpuric lesions, orange or brown color is due to residual hemosiderin, and this is this color may predominate. This is seen mainly in the pigmented purpuric dermatosis. Purpura cannot be blanched by pressure, typically using the technique of dioscopy. So the dioscopy is the usual technique that is employed during examinations and during the clinical practice to determine whether the lesion is, um, uh, is purpuric or not. Capri microscopy may also be helpful in determining whether blood is intravascular or extravascular. Dioscopy may be used for the same purpose. Causes of purpura and ecchymosis. So we have already described, uh, we have already defined that the purpuric uh, causes can be vascular, can be uh, coagulation defects and can be platelet defects. So let's start from the platelet disorders. So the platelet disorders that can cause purpura or ecchymosis can be thrombocytopenia, that is low platelet count, thrombocytosis, that is high platelet count, and abnormal platelet functions. Platelets are normal, but their functions are abnormal. Among the coagulation disorders, there can be inherited disorders. For example, hemophilia, 
or acquired factor deficiency or dysfunction. Then drugs like anticoagulants may cause ecchymosis. Localized ecchymosis occur after heparin injection. Metabolic defects results in vitamin K deficiency and ecchymosis. Hepatic failure also result in vitamin K deficiency and disorder and decreased synthesis of other clotting factors resulting in the same thrombophilias, which is protein C or protein S deficiency, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy and purpura fulminates. The causes of microvascular occlusion leading to purpura is, include dysproteinemias, for example, hypergamma globulinemic purpura, Wallstrom macroglobulinemia, Jogren syndrome, cryoproteinemias, and emboli, which can be crystal emboli, fat, myxomas, or infective emboli. Mechanical vascular causes of purpura can be raised intravascular pressure like cuffing and vomiting due to stasis, due to decreased support of blood vessel like in actinic or senile purpura, in corticosteroid purpura, in scurvy and amyloidosis. Then abnormal vasculature like targetoid hemosidrotic hemangioma or tufted angiomas. So vascular um, benign and malignant tumors may also result the same. Purpura with inflammation. Non-thrombocytopenic toxin or drug-induced purpura. Purpura that is associated with infections. Then capillaritis, which is pigmented purpuric dermatosis, can be idiopathic, it can be drug-induced, and it can be pre-mycotic. Mycotic. Inflammatory purpuric vasculitis, for example, hinox shonlan purpura, which is not the domain of this uh, lecture, and solar purpura. External and other causes of purpura or ecchymosis. These causes include physical and artifactual causes, associated with systemic disease, easy bruising syndrome and purpura simplex, painful bruising syndrome like autoerythrocyte sensitization, and then stigmas, stigmata, sorry. How can we correlate about the diagnosis depending upon the size of purpura? So if the lesions are less than four millimeter, which classify them to be petechies, the causes are mainly thrombocytopenia, which can be idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, or abnormal platelet functions, which can be congenital or acquired, acquired are maybe due to drugs and systemic diseases, or with normal platelets, such as in intravascular, raised intravascular pressure and trauma. If the um, purpuric lesions are of intermediate size, then it could be infections, in patients with thrombocytopenias and immune compromise, and it can be early lesions of vasculitis. If the lesions are larger, that is more than one centimeter, and involve a degree of minor trauma, then the causes are procoagulation defects like anticoagulation, liver failure, vitamin K, K deficiency, poor dermal support of blood vessels like actinic and corticosteroid purpura and scurvy. Other causes include capillaritis, easy bruising syndrome, and physical and artifactual causes. Classification and investigation of purpura. It is important to note the characteristic of the lesion, whether it is purpuric or not, whether it is fatigue or ecchymosis, size, and then number, and distribution, whether it's located on the face, whether located on limbs or trunk, pattern, whether scattered or in a, some pattern like reticulate pattern, and presence or absence of palability and erythema. In general, simple hemorrhage present as macule, though sufficient hemorrhage into subcutaneous tissue become palpable as hematoma. Lesions of occlusion or ischemia begin with minimal or no erythema, sometimes with localized libido reticularis or as necrotic plaques. The non-inflammatory purpura is generally due to hematological causes. 
डायग्नोसिस एंड पैथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ सिंपल मैक्यूलर हेमरेज परपरा इज सजेस्टेड बाय प्रेजेंस ऑफ ब्लड इन द स्किन दैट इज मैक्यूलर नॉन पल्पेबल एंड हैज नो ब्लैंचिंग कंपोनेंट सो फॉर अ डायग्नोसिस ऑफ परपरा व्हिच इज डेफिनेटली विल हेल्प इन डिफरेंशिएटिंग बिटवीन द अदर कॉजेस ऑफ इरिथिमास एंड वैस्कुलाइटिस number 1 perforic lesions are non blanchable and number 2 they are non palpable palpable lesions or a blanching component suggest that there is an associated inflammation features that suggest a need for further investigation larger or variably sized lesions particularly when not in sun damaged skin so bigger lesions and those lesions whose size are variable should be investigated if lesions are numerous or widespread if lesions are coming in crops if lesions are getting palpable if the lesions are forming some reticulate patterns like levido reticiform pattern or there are associated features like pustules necrosis nodules or splinter hemorrhages under the nails evidence of bleeding from other sides for example hematuria and blood in the stools or there are associated general symptoms like fever myalgias arthralgias so all these uh, cases require further investigation on the lines of that diseases or those diseases how can a site where the purpura occur help in establishing the diagnosis eyelid purpura eyelid purpura can be due to coughing or vomiting especially purpura or ecchymosis that occurs in systemic amyloidosis which is uh, popularly known as the raccoon eyes purpura in the ears due to cryoglobulinemia and other hyperviscosity disorders and sometimes drugs on the face ears and acral areas acute hemorrhagic edema and cryoglobulinemia acral purpura can be cryoglobulinemia and other hyperviscosity disorders on friction side uh, clothing contact purpura capriolitis inoxonal purpura and others intraoral intraoral purpura can be because of thrombocytopenia or amyloidosis laboratory tests these are the tests which you are going to order whenever you find a patient suffering from um, thrombocytopenia from suffering from fatigue is or acute platelet counts and function the normal count of platelet is 150 to 400 into 10 to the power 9 per liter purpura due to thrombocytopenia seldom occur with platelet count above 50 into 10 to the power 9 per liter and significant spontaneous bleeding is unlikely unless the count drops to 20 into 10 to the power 9 per liter test of occult bleeding simple test include fundoscopy urine analysis and fecal occult blood tests histological examination of small perforic lesions is usually unhelpful however larger perforic lesions will show some features that is particularly the extravasation of rbcs then capillary resistance and fragility hess test hess test as a standardized increase in capillary pressure is produced by inflating the sphagnomanometer manometer cuff around the upper arm to a constant pressure of 80 mm mercury for 5 minutes fatigue is developed over the next few minutes and can be counted in a measured area of 5 cm diameter just below the antecubital fossa more than 5 petigi are considered abnormal and will be called as a positive hess test which shows that there is some defect in capillary capillaries resulting in fragility bleeding time this is the time taken for the bleeding to cease after a standardized tiny incision the bleeding time is usually prolonged in thrombocytopenias coagulation screening the major coagulation defects can be excluded by clotting screening mainly prothrombin time and uh, pttk and fibrinogen fibrinogen levels 
capillary microscopy. Purpura may at time be seen in the nail fold. Capillaries were not present elsewhere in the skin. Summary. To avoid performing every type of investigation in all the cases of purpura, the following broad generalization may be made. Purpura on the leg of elderly is common and seldom require extensive investigation. So there is no need to investigate the purpura that is particularly involving the legs of an elderly male or a female. Coagulation or platelet defects usually present as large ecchymosis and external or internal bleeding, but not as fatigues. Thrombocytopenia is usually often associated with fatigue. Thrombophilias may present with levidoid changes, retiform purpura, and usually non-inflammatory cutaneous necrosis. An initial retiform pattern without blanchable erythema is generally indicative of microvascular occlusion. Inflammatory purpuric lesions are due to vascular changes rather than simple hemorrhages. Such lesions of vessels are most common cause of persistent and localized purpura. Splinter hemorrhages of nails are due to purpura of nail bed and are not diagnostic of any one condition. So now let's discuss, uh, discuss the individual disorders, platelet disorders that are causing purpura. The main causes of uh, platelet disorder leading to purpura is thrombocytopenia. So thrombocytopenia occur due to defective platelet production in bone marrow abnormality. Aplasia of bone marrow may be due to toxic factors, immunological factors, or just idiopathic. New plasms can cause thrombocytopenias like leukemias, myelomas, and carcinomatosis. Bone marrow is replaced in myelofibrosis, in radiation damage, and in sarcoidosis. Vitamin B12 and folate deficiency may also lead to thrombocytopenia. Then uremia, alcohol, and other drugs may also result in decreased platelet count, and so is various infections. So thrombocytopenia can be because of decrease in platelet survival. The main cause disease is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Platelets allow antibodies, anti-lymphocytic globulins or platelet autoantibodies. Neonatal causes, post-transfusion or marrow transplant, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, prosthetic heart valves, drugs and vaccines, infections, excessive platelet consumption, which is seen in DIC, hemolytic uremic syndrome, and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. So these all are the causes of decreased platelet survival. Then platelet count is normal, but their functions are abnormal. This is again seen in idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, it can be inherited or congenital defect, fawn Willebrand disease, drug-induced, uremia, cardiac bypass, platelet antibodies, SLE, myeloproliferative disorders, and dysproteinemias. Thrombocytosis, that is a platelet count is abnormally high, uh, seen in essential thrombocythemias, other myeloproliferative disorders, and causes like blood loss, trauma, burn, post, splenectomy, malignant disease, tuberculosis, and sarcoidosis. So these all causes may also lead to um, pur purpura despite of high uh, platelet count. Then the first disease I'm going to discuss today is idiopathic or immune thrombocytopenic purpura, which is abbreviated as ITP. ITP results from an immune destruction of platelets by autoantibodies specific for the platelet membrane glycoproteins. 
this occur commonly in children following an acute viral infection or a measles mump and rubella vaccine mmr vaccine some cases are drug induced or associated with uh, auto and uh, other auto antibody diseases like sle a gamma globulinemia or lymphoproliferative disorders or myelodysplasias chronic itp is usually autoimmune and apparently idiopathic this is how itp will manifest as small petechies in two third of the cases it occurred before the age of 21 years with a strong female predominance platelet count usually fall below 15 to 10 to the power 9 per liter and may even be zero the spleen may be slightly enlarged but gross splenomegaly should suggest an alternate diagnosis the diagnosis is established by the clinical picture by low platelet count by exclusion of other causes of thrombocytopenia and by negative bone marrow findings treatment of itp spontaneous remission often occurs in acute attacks but it is rare, rare in chronic cases of more than 3 months about 50% of the patients treated with corticosteroids achieve complete remission splenectomy is beneficial in 2/3 of chronic cases so not done in acute cases done in chronic cases and beneficial in 2/3 of those cases after splenectomy the platelet counts tend to remain low but purpura tend to cease immunosuppressive therapy is indicated in cases that fail to respond to splenectomy and steroids or where splenectomy is contraindicated The treatment used in refractory ITP include danazole, azathioprine, vincristine, interferon alpha, and cyclosporine. Second disease is secondary or symptomatic thrombocytopenia. So the main cause of secondary or symptomatic thrombocytopenia are the direct bone marrow toxicity, for example, by benzoyl or nitrogen mustard, immunological bone marrow damage. Uh, immunological bone marrow damage for example chlorom phenicol destruction of formed platelets via either immunological for example cunidine cunine sulfonamides or non immunological mechanisms like alcohol snake venom and rarely food or food additives then infections other bone marrow diseases and thrombocytopenia due to platelet consumption drugs that cause thrombocytopenia cytotoxic or chemotherapeutic drugs quinine or quinidine then gold bismuth arsenic on heparin sulfonamides thiazides and furosemides nsaid acetyl salicylic acid thiouracil and carbamazole rifampicin and isoniazid imipramine imipramine uh, and interferon phenytoin carbamazepine and sodium valproate so various group of drugs can result in thrombocytopenia immune mediated platelet destruction is probably mainly due to binding of drug to platelets such that the platelets act as heptans then induce drug dependent auto antibodies thrombocytopenia may be associated with wide variety of infections and the infections include septicemias typhoid tuberculosis smallpox chickenpox vaccinia scarlet fever and influenza bone marrow diseases that result in secondary thrombocytopenia include leukemia aplastic anemia and due to, uh, causes due to platelet consumption include thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and hemolytic uremic syndrome and associated with hemangiomas like casabac merritt syndrome due to chronic consumption abnormalities of platelet functions so purpura or ecchymosis due to abnormalities of platelet functions include several hemorrhagic syndromes these syndromes include thrombopathia and thrombasthenias 
the total count of platelet is normal. Drugs that may cause abnormal platelet functions with clinical bleeding include aspirin, diclofenac, some penicillin and lactam antibodies. Thrombocytosis. Abnormally high platelet count may occur as a result of essential thrombocythemia or other myeloproliferative disorders secondary to a variety of other disease processes. This may lead to tendency to platelets plugging and thrombosis and paradoxically to bleeding tendency, particularly when platelet count exceed 1000 to 10 to the power 9 per liter. So in such cases, the, the ecchymosis or bleeding is because, um, is because of the uh, platelet plugs and uh, uh, which lizards and thrombosis, which paradoxically results in the bleeding tendency. Pigmented purpuric dermatosis is a group of diseases that is characterized by capillaritis. It's a chronic condition and it shares the histological features. Gravity and increased venous pressure are important localizing factors in many cases. Exercise may be provoking factor. Drugs reported to cause pigmented purpuric dermatosis include a long list of drugs, which include calcium channel antagonists, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, nitrides, frusamides, <clears throat> antihistamines, antidepressants, chlordiazepoxide, and analgesics like paracetamol, then glipizide, vitamin B1 derivatives, tratrazine, interferon alpha, and topical 5-fluorouracil. This is how pigmented purpuric dermatitis, Schamburg's disease, or capillaritis will look like. There are pinpoint sign paper type Perfect lesions. Schemberg's disease, also known as progressive pigmented purpuric dermatosis, most common in young males but may occur at any age that includes a childhood. Familial incidents have been reported. Lesions most frequently occur on the lower limbs and consist of irregular plaques of orange or brown pigmentation due to hemosiderin with characteristic sign pepper spots appearing within and at the edge of the lesions. There may be slight itching, but usually the disease is asymptomatic. Then there is another related condition, which is called as itching purpura. The condition has similarity to the Schamburg's disease, but is generally more extensive, developed more rapidly, and characterized by persistent and intense itch. They are more pronounced at the side of friction with clothing, and eruption often has a characteristic orange color. Itching responds to topical corticosteroids or oral antihistamines. Then pigmented purpuric lichenoid dermatosis of Gojo and Plum. So there is an addition of a word, lichenoid here, and uh, the disease occur in men aged 40 to 60, not in young males, and affecting the leg. The characteristic feature is presence of lichenoid papules in associated with purpuric rings. So if there is a background of Schamburg disease, and over that background you find some lichenoid lesions, then you can call it as pigmented purpuric lichenoid dermatosis. Lichen aureus is another variable variation of the disease. This is more localized, more intensely purpuric, but often asymptomatic eruption that may have either a lichenoid morphology. Young adults and children are affected, occur in, on the body, limbs, or even face. Lesions are solitary and may be yellowish golden or rust colored or even purple. So these are the various images of lichen aureus usually occur on the hands, on the feet, but can occur on the hands and other body parts. Lesions are more uh, usually um, uh, not very much scattered, usually localized or few lesions and have uh, more uh, purpuric color and um, 
Then the next disease to be discussed here is purpura annularis telangiectoides, also known as the Majoki disease. Differentiate this disease from Majoki's granuloma. So this is Majoki's disease, also called as purpura annularis telangiectoides. This eruption occurs specially in adolescent and young adults of either sex. They are small plaques, one to three centimeters and have an annular configuration from their onset. As the name signifies, it is purpura annularis telangiectoides. Lesions consist of telangiectasias and hemocytin staining of the skin. Individual lesions persist unchanged for many months or years, and treatment is usually unaffected. So this is how the lesions will look like. Now the lesions are purpuric, but have an annular configuration. And on close inspection, hemocytin deposition and, uh, um, and uh, uh, telangiectasias are seen. Treatment of pigmented purpuric dermatosis. These disorders persist for many years and are resistant to any form of therapy. Support hosiery is most appropriate approach. Patients should always be given elastic stockings or advised crepe bandage. Topical corticosteroid may be of some help, especially for itch, but very prolonged use is best avoided because of the side effect of cutaneous thinning. Sorelin and PUVA are UVA, that is PUVA is proven effective in treating capillaritis of Schemberg's disease, Gojo and Blum and Lichenosis. Then there is a big group of diseases due to raised intravascular pressure. Raised intravascular pressure may cause purpura in absence of other diseases. Crops of petechiae after prolonged coughing or vomiting occur especially in relatively loose tissue of face and neck. Purpura due to decreased support of blood vessels. Usually the blood vessels are surrounded by um, a good amount of fat, but uh, many disorders result in fat atrophy, making, making the vessels vulnerable to damage. So those vessels with abnormal collagen, elastin, or other dermal changes lead to poor support of the blood vessels. And such conditions include alert and loss syndrome, which is due to collagen defect, pseudoxanthoma elasticum, which is due to elastic tissue defect, and amyloidosis, which is due to abnormal proteins. Scurvy again result in altered collagen support of the blood vessels and manifest as petechiae or bruises. Then actinic purpura or the Bateman's purpura or senile purpura and corticosteroid purpura are the commonest pattern of purpura due to lack of support of blood vessels. Easy bruising syndrome or purpura simplex. The term easy bruising syndrome has been used in various ways usually for mild purpura for which no cause have been detected, especially on thigh of women, also known as the devil's pinches. It includes those cases of mild bleeding tendency with variable but slight change in coagulation factors. So this is one of the cause of um, uh, self-induced purpuric injuries. Physical and artifactual causes of purpura. String vest, may cause a distinctive reticular pattern of uh, petechiae. Then black here or tail on noir is a purpura at the heel because of uh, unaccustomed trauma. Bizarre pat pattern of purpura due to dermatitis artifacta or caused by suction, for example, vacuum extractors, neonates, electrocardiogram leads, etc. So this is tail on noir. And many a time it is confused with um, with um, melanoma. So it is better to do a dermoscopy here and you will find the blood see, uh, in the superficial uh, portion of the skin on dermoscopy. On histology, again, the blood is seen on the top of the underlying epidermis with just slight pairing of the skin. This, um, this uh, uh, accumulation of blood will disappear. Then this, these kind of purpura which have some patterns and uh, aberrant patterns, then it is because of dermatitis artifactas, can be various motives and causes with, with various psychological conditions of the patients. Paroxysmal finger hematoma. In this syndrome, there is a recurrent episode of painful bruising on palm and palmar aspect of fingers. 
it seems likely that it presents as venous rupture as frictional trauma may be reported such as turning on a tap or twisting the top of a jar. Autoerythrocyte sensitization syndrome, also known as, known as painful bruising syndrome. This is due to allergic sensitivity of red cells in the tissue. The diagnosis is confirmed by intradermal injection of red cells. This reaction occur even in subjects in whom a psychological cause is suspected. Plasmapheresis have been used successful, successfully in isolated cases and antimalarials are also found to be effective in such cases. Stigmata, a very rare disorder in which there is exudation of apparently fresh blood through unbroken skin of hand, feet and side. The mechanism is obscure, but as with previous syndrome, many, if not all cases have a traumatic or self-induced origin. Solar purpura is used to describe rapidly developing purpuric lesions after exposure to sunlight. Precise nature of this disorder is uncertain. However, decreased support of blood vessels may be a cause. Then the last condition of today is acro acroangiodermatitis of Mali, also known as the gravitational purpura. This is a chronic dermatosis associated with venous insufficiency or with vascular anomalies such as Klippertinoni syndrome. It mimics pigmented purpuric dermatosis, but purpura is due to abnormal vasculature rather than capillaritis. Individual lesions are minute purpuric macules that collage to form irregular plaques that may be several centimeters in diameter. So this is a purpuric and dermatitis combined. The lesions occur especially on lower leg, edema, sclerosis, ulceration, and other signs of venous insufficiency may be associated. Treatment is unsatisfactory, but support hoisery may be, may seem logical. Other treatments include those of ulcerations and venous insufficiency. So thank you all for today and hope to see you next time with second part of the same lecture. So goodbye and have a good day.